Hi everyone, this is Michael Paglione. I just wanted to uh, talk to you about a case that I just resolved. It involved a construction worker, a roofing construction worker. He was 31 years old at the time. The accident took place in the winter of 2017. He and his uh, fellow workers were um, working on a rooftop about the size of a football field. It was a commercial building and um, he was uh, hired by a subcontractor, so he was working for his employer, and the employer subcontractor was hired by a general contractor. In New Jersey, you're not allowed to sue your um, employer because of workers' compensation law. Uh, you could file a compensation claim, but you cannot sue the employer for negligence. But if there's a general contractor, you can sue that contractor if the, G if the GC is negligent. Uh, and not uh, making certain that all OSHA and other construction um, rules are being followed. So we did that. We sued the general contractor because what happened to this gentleman is um, he was uh, taking a break and the break or water station that was set up uh, and known to be set up by the general contractor was about 50 yards away on the rooftop and the harness that he was wearing uh, the fall protection harness that he was wearing was only about 20, uh, 20 yards or 20 feet rather. He was told that he had to wear a harness at all times while on the roof. However, this brake station uh, where they placed the water and food was about 50 yards away and his harness was only about 20 feet. So in order to get to the brake station, he obviously, he and his co-workers had to take the harness off and walk on the roof. And um, in doing so on the third day when he was walking back from the brake station he fell through the roof and uh, fell 30 feet to the concrete landing below there was no there were no floors in the building it was like a huge warehouse and so he fell a full 30 feet suffered severe fractures to his ankles both one ankle was so bad that it, the bones were out of his uh, skin, you know, it was a compound fracture that uh, the bones came out of his skin and he had to have it surgically repaired and he had two surgeries on that one foot. As a consequence, we hired um, four experts because liability was hotly contested. The defendants said that because our client took his harness off, it was his own fault. Um, we argued that if the general contractor were doing the right thing, the general contractor would have seen, had they properly supervised, that the uh, workstation was farther away than the harness would stretch. And they would have remedied that problem, and they didn't do that. And they had people from the GC up there on that roof every day, they said, even though the subcontractor uh, indicated that that was not the case, and so did our client. But at any rate, we hired an expert construction OSHA uh, liability um, expert out of Colorado, and he opined that the um, contractor, the general contractor, failed to follow OSHA rules and various other regulations involving proper construction of rooftops in the commercial sector. We also hired uh, the surgeon that did the surgical repair. We hired a vocational expert um, that talked about our client's inability to make money uh, and gainful employment in the future, and we hired an economist to put all that money in front of the jury that our client lost as a result of his injury. So it was the, the claim or the damage claim was twofold. It was the pain and suffering uh, and the permanent injury that our client was left with as a result of the uh, fall, but also the loss of earnings, the loss of earning power. And um, as I said, this issue was you know, hotly contested. We went to mediation and, and that failed. And then we were scheduled for trial. Uh, the defense argued that the subcontractor's negligence, the employer subcontractor's negligence should be put on the verdict sheet and the, ver and the jury should be allowed to, uh, to make a determination and, and, and allocate a percentage of liability on the, uh, employer. And we argued that that was not in accordance with the law. The Supreme Court had already made a decision that that was inappropriate. So we were, we, we felt we would be successful in that argument uh, in not having the subcontractor employer on the verdict sheet. And it was at that point that uh, we were um, 
asked by the trial judge to enter into further negotiations. Our initial demand on this case was $1.5 million, and we ultimately settled the case for our client for just under a million dollars. So we were very happy. The client was very happy. A complication to this was that workers' compensation asserted a lien, uh, and that lien was uh, 350000 that we negotiated down to 250000 So the client was able to walk away with a fair amount of compensation. So it's another great story, I think, that uh, we have here at Schaefer Malakin to share with you all. Thanks very much for watching.